started out uh, in 1898, uh, where my great-grandfather was the first to take patent on thread cutting tools. The company had uh, different uh, uh, owners over the years. Actually, I had a big uh, wish to be a part of uh, the family wall, and uh, we bought the company back. Uh, and um, then we found out how shit it was. <laughs> Instead of taking the production back from China, we are simply setting up robots or CNC machine sensors, as they are called in our line of business. I believe that I can make products at the same price as China in Copenhagen with robotics. Machines cost the same. Our biggest challenge is if an end user will be able to 3D print the product then they have no use for this 3,000 square meter building or 18,000 item numbers. They will just print whatever they need. Uh, so therefore, we, we started the company Turm 3D Print. We started to look into 3D print technology simply because a traditional small and middle-sized company in Denmark would die within five to ten years if we don't kind of reinvent ourselves. The market for cutting tools in Europe is about 17 billion euros, so it's huge. What 3D printing technology can apply for our tools is that we suddenly can optimize the internal structures and we are also able to make grid structures inside the tools so we can make them lighter in a way that is simply not possible with traditional manufacturing processes. This technology will revolutionize the way we produce today, there's no doubt. To be very honest, this company we're sitting in right now is thriving, it's, it's growing, but I must also say that it would not have been alive right now if we have not done those a little bit crazy things we have been doing. You can actually take a small manufacturer from Vidor who almost died and have the potential to be one of the biggest and most important tool makers in the world that has never been possible before. That's a new thing. And that is digitalization, exponentiality, and especially is disruption. And most of all, is 3D printing.